So this is the making space. Um, I have several different tables. This is kind of like, just like a holding table right here where things land when they're going to go somewhere else. Uh, this is like the main table that I work on. And I have these self-healing pads on here so you can, you can cut on them. And uh, it's just, an, it's easier on the knife, but also you're not um, wrecking the table. And then here I end up laying out things that need something to happen. So I have a bunch of new smaller works that will get portfolioed. And then also uh, a piece of a new material I'm working on that's a clear. So it's actually a light sensitive material, just like the other, and it's still created as a photogram. Um, but the, the paper is called Fuji Clear um, and it's, it's commercially based. So it's Fuji Flex, the other paper I use. Um, not normally used in the way that I'm using it, but I'm really interested in this because I like the way that it could be lit and bleed its own landscape of light onto the wall. Um, I, have a, I have a whole show up of this exact work um, at Wasaic. It's north of us here and uh, inside of an old mill. It's called the Maxon Mills. And so inside there, I have my first experimentation with this, this project. And I've been working on this paper for two years, but uh, nobody's really bit on the idea. So I ended up just having to produce it and make it happen so that it can happen in the future. And it looks beautiful because the density of the light on the wall is very similar to the light that you see on the paper. So it's kind of like when you see something coming through a window and it, you just, you're stri you're, it strikes you because you notice this reflection on the wall, but it's like only you that really experiences that. You try, even if you try to take a photo with your iPhone, it just, <laughs> it doesn't look as good. Uh, but um, Does that hang separate from the wall and the piece becomes the light that's on the wall? Yeah, so actually um, it would hang like um, perpendicular to the wall. So like basically like if this pole was the, the wall, it would hang like this. They're hung on these cleats that go into the wall. So they hang like this and then they're lit and then therefore there's the object like this and it goes from both sides. I have them uh, face mounted with uh, a plexiglass and then, bat and then back mounted with a laminate. So they exist just as a clear, almost looking glass-like looking structure. I intend actually hopefully to do them as a public art sculpture later with glass on either side. Um, although I have to figure out how to do that production wise. <laughs> so in, in, in the future. Um, but then, yeah, these are brand new pieces. Sometimes I'm even cutting into my photograms. So this is like literally just carved with a, with my, um, what do you call this? Phillips head. My Phillips head. Yeah. So into the thing. I mean, as an experimental photographer, I'm constantly just trying all these new things. So, and I have been doing this for years. Like I started as a lens-based photographer, but around 2000, I just kind of got in this mode of like, how can I push photography? Um, so I still take pictures, but taking pictures just is like, it's good, but it, um, for me, it's not quite enough. And I always reminded myself, like when I asked myself, what makes a great photograph? I kept coming back to one thing and it was light. I was like, light makes a great photograph. And you know, natural light or like super powered strobes, even super powered strobes outside. And just because I kept thinking of the light, then I ended up starting to work with the light. Okay, so now we're gonna move again, pivoting um, to, well, this is where the photographs come when they have a portfolio usually, um, or under here. But um, back here are other landscapes that I'm working on. Um, I'm, my main content of my work is abstractions and landscapes and landscape abstractions that are put together. Um, so a lot of the landscapes, including the first one you saw, including well, many of these and including even this one here, um, are combinations of landscapes. So they end up being like two or more landscapes put together. And those landscapes could be uh, basically places I visited, places I've visited in my mind, 
um, places I've researched and drawn. I do a lot of drawing prior to starting my work. Um, so they're, they're landscapes that I, I think are inter interdimensional and um, they, they don't exist in a time or a space exactly, uh, but, but they're there. And they have elements of things that you recognize and also things that you maybe don't recognize and things that could seem um, otherworldly, but then also maybe just possibly a different perspective and done in a different color. So the moons and there could be two moons or three moons, or they could have a, a different shaped moon or different shaped mountains or um, things that could exist in another in another place. It's, they start with the drawing. Not only do they start with the drawing, they start with me researching drawings and then trying to combine drawings into uh, non-traditional shapes of drawings. So a landscape could present itself in some in a way that you wouldn't normally see it. Um, maybe not based in gravity or maybe based in um, something you've never really looked through before. So it's, so yeah, they start in drawings often. Um, and I really plan out how the colors are gonna sit next to each other. Um, but then with the entanglement, a lot of them have a partner, partner piece. So here you see a mirrored landscape. And in this, the entangled partners are together. This would be what one would just normally call a diptych, right? They have to stay together. However, what exists within these works in general is they have an, a partner that won't sit next to them, will be owned by somebody else, will live somewhere else, will always be somewhere else. And I'm interested in the connection that happens between the works that's also made through me. Like I make them as entangled partners. So I make them and I connect them almost like these twins. And then they they live other places. So like an, a twin to this piece, which was an entangled partner is in Charlotte, Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, there is a there is another partner to this piece that exists that I won't that I won't sell so that I'm holding on to. Um, there's another partner to this piece. Um, not all of them have partners. This one has a partner um, and then that's it out of this group. But so sometimes they have a partner. And in fact, there's a few pieces that I've made a third or fourth entangled partner too, because um, as it's, as Einstein has included that there could be more partners that are entangled. Uh, but I just like think of that energy. You know, you meet somebody and uh, even if you just have an exchange with somebody at Walgreens, like there's some entanglement that happened. Like all of your self connected with all of the with all of them. Even not just on a even even if it wasn't a, on a communicable language level, it's just it happened. You connected, and so something about you is still connected to them, and it just reminds me of the uh, idea that we're all connected. We're all one, and we're all we're all like. All, uh, all of humanity is like a giant family.